hey everyone welcome back so uh in this video i will briefly walk you through this lab so this lab uh, mostly concerns uh, the mean covariance and correlation of uh, the sample so what you will do is you will follow all of the things i have done in this lab and you'll do them on your own computer so this will give you more practice um, in working with R and also help you understand some of the concepts that I discussed in the previous video. So first of all, you load the library MVA. Uh, this contains this data set called Pottery. Uh, you can use this function class to view the uh, what kind of an object X is. So in this case, the class of X is a data frame. So before you uh, proceed with analyzing any data set, make sure you take a look at it, right? So one uh, way to take a look at your data set is using this head function. So this head function will print the first few rows of uh, the data frame or the matrix. So I can see that these are all of my variables, right? Uh, the last one looks a little bit different than all of these variables. Uh, it seems to be taking uh, values of 1, um, but if I print out all of the possible values this variable takes, you can see that it takes 5 possible values, right? So it has all of these values, these, are, these uh, variables seem to be continuous. This last one uh, seems to be uh, reflect a category. So suppose I want to calculate mean of all of these variables. I'm going to leave this last one aside because this is a special kind of a, a variable. So if I wanted to calculate mean of all of these variables, right, uh, I can either use a for loop, but there is another function that we can use and that is the apply function. And how do we use it? Uh, you say apply, then you uh, you in, you will in, you'll write in the uh, the the matrix or the data frame that you want to work with. If you're interested in the rows of the matrix, you will say two. If you're interest sorry one. If you're interested in columns, you will say two. And mean is the function that you want to execute. So what this says is, I want to find the mean of every column of this data frame if i had a one year instead then what this would do is find the mean of each row of this data frame so apply is a very handy function i end up using it all the time so do play around with this a little bit on your own so similarly if i wanted to find the variance of each column then again, I can use the apply function. Um, so in this case, again, this is the data frame followed by two because I'm gonna find the variance of each column. And then finally, I will write the word, uh, the function that I want to execute, which is the VAR function. So this part of the lab will demonstrate how covariance is affected by the scale of variables, right? So covariance is supposed to reflect whether or not there exists a linear relationship between the variables, right? So the greater the uh, value of covariance, the, the stronger is the linear relationship. So I've uh, set up a little bit of an experiment here, right? So X, I, so we first generate 200 random variables from a uniform distribution. This uniform distribution is based in the interval from one to two. Then we generate Y1, which uh, Y1 is basically two times X plus one. So if you plot the two, uh, if you plot the values of these two variables, we get a straight line. This is no surprise, right? Because y1 is a linear function of x. So there is a perfect linear relation between x and y1. And if you calculate the covariance between these two variables, it's 0.169. Now, 
we generate another variable y2, which is phi times x plus 1. So y2 has larger values because now we're multiplying x with a larger number. Again, both x and y2 have a perfect linear relation. So now if we look at the covariance of y2, it's 0.4, right? So, so this is the problem, right? So x and y1 have a perfect linear relation and x and y2 have a perfect linear relation, right? However, the covariance of this y, covariance of x and y2 is larger than the covariance of x and y1. However, we cannot say that x and y2 are more linearly, more linearly related, right? So this is a drawback. So um, just because even though covariance of x and y2 is larger, it, it, we cannot say that it has a more linear relation. So this is why we use the correlation instead of the covariance. So this is the conclusion of this lab. So next we take a look at the sample correlation. So remember correlation is another measure. It measures linear dependence between two variables. Um, so I generate another variable y3 which is sine of x plus 3. So if I plot x and y3 the graph looks like this. So x and y3 are related but it is a non-linear relation. And now if I check the correlation between x and y1, it's 1. That makes sense because x and y1 are perfectly related. And if I look at the correlation between x and y3, it's 0.4. And that makes sense because even though they are related, the relation is not linear. So correlation captures a linear relation. It does not necessarily capture or it does not capture non-linear relation. So uh, this next part demonstrates how correlation is not affected by the scale of the variable, right? So I have y4, which is 10 times x plus 1. So, uh, so if I plot the uh, graph of x and y4, it's still a straight line. Remember, x and y1 is still a straight line. However, the uh, so scale of y1 is from 3 to 5. Scale of y4 is 12 to 20, so scale of y4 is larger. Now, if we look at correlation of both of these, it's 1, right? Because both x and y1 and x and y4 have a perfect linear relation, and this is reflected by this correlation of 1. So in the next exercise, you will take a look at this uh, US air pollution data. It's available in R. Um, and I think if you uh, look at our documentation of this data set, you can get more information on the data set. So go ahead and try out uh, the exercise on this data set and answer these two questions. Anyway, that's all for this uh, video. I will talk to you in the next one. Bye.